Hi, I'm Emily from Homemade Emily Jane. If you've ever tried to quilt on your domestic sewing machine before, then you know it's not easy and can take a bit of practice. Today I'm going to share with you three quilting hacks to make straight line quilting on your domestic machine easier and hopefully make you more comfortable with it. I chose to do straight line quilting specifically because it's what I started with and it's still today one of my favorite methods. In this video, I'm going to share with you three tips and tricks. However, before we get started, we have to make sure that you're ready. Before you can begin quilting, you start off with your quilt top, your batting, and your backing. And you baste the three layers together to make your quilt sandwich. There are lots of different ways to baste a quilt, but I personally prefer to use spray baste and then I do a few pins at the end just for added security. Here's a super speedy video showing you how I baste my quilt. Start off with the batting and the backing and spray them together with your favorite spray baste. Next, spread out your quilt top and spray that to the batting just like you did the other two layers. I like to pay extra special attention to the corners to make sure that they're adequately attached and then I put in some pins. Alright, let's get started. Quilting hack number one is to mark your quilt. Whether you're doing straight line quilting or not, it helps if you have a quilting plan and mark it out on your quilt. Some people might follow the seams of their quilt instead of marking and that is definitely an option, but I personally am a lot happier with my end results when I mark the lines. There are lots of methods and techniques for marking a quilt. You'll see here I mark my quilts using a ruler and a hair marker. You could also use the back end of a butter knife for this too. To mark with the hair marker, simply apply pressure while you drag the hair marker along the edge of your ruler, which creates a crease on your quilt. It is just noticeable enough to see while quilting, but it disappears so easily over time. Some other suggestions for marking your quilt might be using a heat erasing pen or a water soluble marker. If you used pins while basting like I did, be sure to skip over them while you're marking the quilt. Once you decide how you want the quilting to look, you can use your ruler to evenly space out your lines. You can line up the edge of your ruler with previous lines that you've drawn and use the seams of your quilt as a guide to make sure that they're straight. For this quilt, I did a diagonal crosshatch with each line two inches apart. Quilting hack number two is to wear quilting gloves. These are mine. Getting gloves to wear while quilting was a game changer for me. The grippy little fingertips make grabbing onto your fabric so much easier and consequently even helped relieve the shoulder pain I was experiencing while quilting before I got the gloves. You can see here how I place my hands as I guide the quilt through the machine. You'll want to stop every few seconds to keep your hands near where you are stitching and adjust the weight distribution of the quilt if you're working on a larger project. And quilting hack number three is to use a walking foot. Can you believe that I was quilting for four years before I even found out what a walking foot is? If you aren't yet familiar, the walking foot is also sometimes called an even feed foot or a dual feed foot. It basically has feed dogs on the top that coincide with the feed dogs on the bottom of your machine, which makes the layers of the quilt glide through at a nice even pace. As I quilt with my walking foot, I always try to go in the same direction if it's possible. For this baby quilt, I was able to do all of it in one direction by folding the fabric up and feeding it through the throat space of my machine. This machine has a pretty big throat space, but if your machine is smaller or if you are working on a much larger quilt, you'll want to do one side all in the same direction and then flip the quilt around and do the other half in the opposite direction. Here's a little bonus tip, go slow. Your end results will be so much better if you take it slow. The general rule of thumb is to take it at about half the speed that you'd use while piecing. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out homemadeemilyjane.com for lots more tips and tricks.